What's up, you good looking thing? Today, we talk about banning foreigners, banning blind bidding, and banning people from away. We just love to ban people. Consider yourself canceled. <laughs> it all starts now. Innovation is in our veins. Soon the whole world will know our names. Sharing our knowledge and freedom reign. We here for the people, you know it's our way. Setting foundations is part of the dream. It doesn't matter if you're new to the game. Listen up now, cause we all gonna say, Ugh. Elevate, 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 higher. Elevate, 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 higher. We gon' rise up, we all gonna shine. Work through adversity, stay on the grind. Elevate, elevate, this is our time. Elevate, elevate. Welcome to the LA Podcast, everyone. It's so great to have you all on one more time. It's your boy, Josh. Dalton. And we're grateful to be back on with you one more time. Ooh, we're back. Yeehaw! We got some stuff to get into today. Well, we you know, seemed a little obtuse at the start of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Sound like we wanted to build a wall or something. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, Jeez, is that the quiet Jeez, part out loud? <laughs> My bad. No, today we talk about the uh, how the go- federal government of Canada decided to ban foreign home buyers. Yeah, they uh, released this in almost immediately. Maybe it's just a placebo, but I've noticed like properties low key staying on the market a little longer, a little bit longer, or it's not selling like as much over. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, just interesting. Exactly. Yeah. We're talking about the non-resident deed transfer tax in Nova Scotia that got implemented, uh, and then as well as could blind bidding yeah, on houses be coming yeah, to an end. They're going to expose offers. Weird. And that uh, is crazy. That is crazy. And to anyone who has a weird obsession with Hezbollah, why are we talking about him <laughs> Honestly, me. I love Hezbollah. <laughs> He's such an icon. Shout out Hezbollah. So there's like all kinds of stuff we're going to get into today. And as well, we're introducing something a little new. Uh, you won't be hearing it on this podcast uh, or this episode. Uh, but we'll, we, we will be releasing a bonus segment talking about food shortages around the world, which we'll be releasing that exclusively in our Discord group. Um, so if you're interested in seeing that, you can join Discord. Yeah. And it'll be right over there. And, uh, yeah, so without any further ado. Dude, let's get into it. I am, this one is the one I'm most stoked to talk about just because I think there's huge opportunity for people right now struggling to maybe purchase something. Absolutely. No, I get you on that. Um, first, before we get into the meat of it, we want to, we kind of, we like starting off these shows with a little bit of a response to some Q and A's. Oh yeah. And, uh, there's actually one review we got this week, um, that we this is a positive one. Uh, it's not negative, um, but this one meant a lot, and we really appreciate this person leaving it for us. And uh, honestly, left it on our website about us and the show and what's meant to them. Uh, and you know, Dalton's about to pull it up and read it here. Yeah, I'm just trying to find it here. Let's see. Uh, we get these now. Uh, I'd say we've been getting one a week at this rate on our website, which I love. The people are finding our website, mm-hmm. lvpodcast.ca. We'll link the Discord to there as well. It might be easier for audio listeners to go find. But um, Richard from actually the United States. So, yeah, this was the first review not from Nova Scotia. Wow. Wrote, I adore this podcast. I'm 37 years old and finally earning more than $40,000 a year. Since then, I've become more interested in investing and money making in general. Your podcast has helped give me the courage to look into investing and making more for myself and especially my family. Thank you for the excellent work. And I instantly died. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. No one goes on the internet to leave good reviews that often. Yeah. Like in my life, I'd rarely do that. So when I saw that, I was like, what? I'm 22. Why are you listening to me? Like, uh, what? <laughs> what? That's crazy. You started giving yourself more credit, Dalton. When you tell people that you're 22, most people don't believe me when I tell people your age. I know. There's like, no, he's definitely 30. Don't <laughs> gaslight me, but my age. Yeah. <laughs> he's a young man. <laughs> um, but no, like. I texted that to you instantly. I was like, what? Yeah, you sent that to me over text. And like, I, I don't know if it was the type of day I was having or whatever it was. But like, I, I got a little misty eyed. I'm not going to lie. Because that's cool. Yeah. That's like it's like for two reasons i guess maybe it's like the tech person in me is like people are seeing the website mm-hmm. i'm like that's cool yeah you know like mm-hmm. you know we have it mm-hmm. so i'm like maybe there's so maybe there's value there mm-hmm. and then people are like writing to us I, I'm like, what is going on like yeah. how'd you find us yeah uh, it's yeah it's incredible like it's 
I guess we'll say it publicly because it's interesting. Um, so obviously about 80% of our listeners are out of Canada. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously. Um, but we have like about 20% out of the States. Yep. Um, and I think it's like 13% of that 20 is out of West Virginia. Really? Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, so I'm like, shout out to those who are from West Virginia who are listening in. We love you. Thank yeah, you. If you're from West Virginia, like this video. Yeah, please. Uh, like this video or send us. Uh, just to, uh, like a note, we'd be curious to hear yeah, you, about yeah, your perspective. Yeah, you can. There's a contact form or the review page. Yeah. We get them to our email, so yeah. It'd love be to hear from you. Yeah, exactly. That was crazy, and so well, yeah, when I saw that, uh, it, that's kind of usually been my thing since we started the show. Mm. Um, like I've never really been a person who really cares if we have like thousands of people who listen to us. It'd be cool if that happened. Yeah. Um, but it's not something like um like been out of shape of getting to we uh, we don't look at the number no we mainly just want to look at who we're helping and yeah and i've always been the belief that we can eat even just help one person uh grow and, and push themselves and and do something cool for them and themselves and their families uh that would mean the world and that was that for me i think that's why we've always referred to ourselves as social capitalists because it's like we give these um pieces of advice or put people on to a different framework or a way of looking at your money. But we're doing it in such a way where I want to help people, my community, this online community we've built. Like it, I think it is just such a unique way that describes what we're doing. Absolutely. I hear you on that. So thank you though to the one who left that, uh, as we said, uh, none of these go on her. Yeah, every time <laughs> I say that, when we do the whole, oh, it doesn't go unnoticed. It doesn't you go know. unnoticed. Absolutely. And clearly Dalton's still jazz. So you got him all fired up. So I know. thank you for doing that. It makes my job easier as we do the show. Uh, I don't have to get his energy level. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I drank a Red Bull before I came here. <laughs> Never mind. It was Red Bull. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, so I thought that was interesting. Um, all right. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to spend too much time burying the lead. Uh, and so I just realized we got people excited about, you know, us banning foreign home buyers. And yeah, we got to uh, talk about that and, first. Yeah. <laughs> we just spent 10 minutes not talking about it. Yeah. So uh, we'll jump right into it. Um, Everyone's clicked off. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Richard. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Canada to ban foreigners from buying homes as prices soar. Trudeau to put billions toward boosting housing supply. And the benchmark price is up more than 50% over the past two years. So this is something that's come down from the federal government, which is kind of nuts. The second I saw this, I was like, this isn't going to help. Is that what you had to Yeah, your I was just like, this seems like not the right thing they should have done. I think it's, you know. It's, well, I, you know, I mean, it's 15 years too late. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, when you think of, okay, they're trying to protect from foreign ownership, Generally speaking, we're speaking about corporations like mm -hmm. coming in and buy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that is a threat. But what corporations are buying, like actively buying, are like pre sale condo units for like rental art for like um, Airbnb arbitrage, mm -hmm. for like corporate housing arbitrage. They are buying land, 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 everywhere, land. And yeah. this does not protect land. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, this is just homes, single mm -hmm. family homes. Mm -hmm. So I don't even think it protects multi-unit, does it? Um, it's a good question. I don't know. I, I wouldn't. Because as soon as the property is zoned commercial, like if you're buying a commercial property, I don't know if this applies. But From what I was reading, um, I I didn't go deep into this bill. I went deep into the Nova Scotia bill. Yeah. Um, the Nova Scotia one does not protect against uh, multi-units. Like you can still actively purchase those. Without a, a foreign yeah. buyer penalty. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting. So yeah, I don't fully, it gets when. So you may get yourself a home now, but you might not be able to create any wealth for yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Like, as I said, uh, with JT at the helm, um, uh, on the surface looks looks cool. Yeah. But on the totally. depth, depths of it, we don't know if it will change a whole lot. Yeah. At least for, the, for right now, it'll make us feel better um, that, you know, it's hard for people just to come in and start buying up a bunch of condos and leaving them here. Yeah. Because that happened a lot. So that started in Vancouver. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of those from, you know. They just sat vacant. Yeah. They just, yeah, they sat there and they just bought up. They just parked money in them mm -hmm. is all they did. Yeah. We talked about this, yeah. about how the real estate industry here is just full of money laundering. Mm -hmm. And that happened. And so over the years, like, you know, that really, really took place, started happening kind of late 90s, early 2000s um, oh, yeah. and just continued um, throughout. And it's gotten worse and worse to like, you know, I think probably early 
mid two thousands. Um, Vancouver is known as like the most expensive city in Canada. Right around the Olympics. Yeah. Vancouver was toast Mm -hmm. in terms of affordability. Exactly. It started getting spicy. And then obviously Toronto started catching up um, to that. And that's kind of what Canada is known as. Toronto and Vancouver are the most expensive cities uh, on the global scale or some of the most expensive cities in the world. Um, And then then COVID hit. Yeah. And people started leaving the cities. Yeah. And had big money to go drop in places like Halifax. Yeah, uh, Winnipeg, and just today, RentSync released their April 2022 report that Halifax is the most third in demand city in all of Canada for rentals. <laughs> yeah, in all of Canada, third most in demand city. That's crazy, and we all know who the first two probably are. So that's saying something. And it's not who you think. Really, the first two were not. I should have saved it. It was not who you thought. Interesting. Yeah, it's like what Calgary. I think so. Yeah, I, could probably see yeah, that. I think. Mm-hmm. I immediately was just looking for Halifax because yeah. I was like, that's got to be like number eight. Right. Not nope. number three. Yeah. Wow. And like it was not Toronto, Montreal above them. Interesting. Like, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm curious. Like things have changed. People obviously. like it over here now. Yeah. Yeah. COVID's changed everything, right? Like with now pretty much virtual uh, remote work is just now the norm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like, of course. Like, why would I live in Toronto? <laughs> no, I don't have to. Yeah. But I could work for a Toronto tech company. Mm-hmm. And get paid for all the money. Yeah, and then live by the ocean. It's kind of nice. Yeah, it's it's a nice trade off. I'm not gonna lie. Like I remember, I, w- I remember you know, obviously pre COVID days. Um, I was like the one of my only gr- of my friend group who moved from Toronto to Halifax. Yeah, and I kept telling people, I was like, trust me. Like this was probably back in 2014, 2015, 2016. I was mm-hmm. like, this is a millennial's dream. Like mm. this place, it's, it's a city that's growing. Tech is growing. Yeah. Houses are wicked, wicked affordable. And you can live by the ocean. Yeah. Or if you want a lake, it's just so, it's so affordable. Because, um, like, at that point, the average was, like, 350000 for, like, a, a nice home. Yeah. You know? And, and then COVID hit, and people started moving from the bigger cities out here. And now uh, you, you're not going to find a nice home for 350000 It's not going to happen anymore. Not on the peninsula. No, definitely not on the peninsula. And uh, there was a actually Halifax real estate agent that posted an interesting video today uh, I came across. And he was talking about how Halif- Halgonians, people who are from here, need to start changing their framework and their mind of how they uh, attack housing. Right. And he's like, you need to stop viewing a 20-minute drive as, as if it's the end of the world. Yeah. Because people are moving from here and they're moving to places like Churro. Well, they don't mind doing the hour commute. Enfield, Elmsdale. All of it. Mount Uniac. Mm-hmm. Like it's all it's all going up. And uh like But at en- least you get in. Exactly. Enfield is the one that's surprising me the most. Like right now, I am in the midst of securing property out there. Yeah. I couldn't believe like the pricing in an Enfield is equivalent to it's it's higher than Quadber. Yeah. Higher than Hammond's plans. Yeah, well, Crazy. Armco's building something out there, I think. Really? It's on their website. Really? Yeah, they're building one of their communities. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's like Enfield's like popping. Like, I couldn't believe, like, there's houses like on the low end that are going for 750, 800 out there, which is nuts. Because there are people who maybe, no, not maybe. There are people who were living in shoeboxes, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like a, a, a 600 square foot one bedroom in downtown Halifax or downtown Toronto, Montreal. Mm-hmm. And they sold it for a million some odd dollars. Yeah. So who cares that they bought a $500,000 ranch in yeah. Enfield? Like they want that space. They want to have a dog, a family, uh, a garage, side by sides, a boat. They can afford all that thing, all of them. And they're probably near water. Yeah. So they can go do all that fun stuff. Mm hmm. Exactly, and they're near the airport, so if they want to go back to see their family, easy peasy. You're 20 minutes to the de- and 20 minutes to the airport. Yeah, I know. Pretty, it's a nice spot. That's actually the reason why I'm looking there. Yeah, <laughs> it's because of that reason. So, and I get it. So, foreign foreign home buying being banished, I think we'll uh, we'll see the immediate benefit of it. You'll uh, see a lull similar to like it was I think 2015, 16, 17. There was a lull in in you know pricing and and it kind of tamed for a minute but it yeah. instantly went back up to you know normal yeah and i think we're just at a new normal right now and mm-hmm. i hate that sentence new normal i don't like that but you either it's gonna hurt to hear you make some sacrifices to get in 
or you waste your time complaining. Yeah. It's tough. You know, because I've never heard of someone who, over the span of a mortgage, so we'll say 30 years, bought a property, and it wasn't worth more than 30 years. Right. So even if you get in it there, you can eventually, through equity, get closer, get closer, get closer. See, I think that there's something that's really messing with people, and especially our generation, mm-hmm. is they saw what happened in 2008. I think that's a screws with people. People, I understand, are probably petrified, terrified. Not even that. I, like, sure, I'm sure there's parts of that, definitely. Yeah. But the what I'm getting at is people are thinking a 2008 like thing is going to happen, and all the housing is going to crash, and that it's going to go back to levels that they could afford again. Oh. And that's what they're hoping for. That's a lot of people are hoping for that. And I, I know a crash will come, but even if the worst crash happens, you're just going to see it go back to 2020 levels. At the worst. And the same thing, are you buying, you're, you shouldn't be buying the home in like, without realizing it, it say there's a dip for five years. Mm-hmm. It, it will course correct by the time your, your mortgage is, is clear. You know, mm-hmm. like in 30 years at home will be worth more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's why we would encourage people like, like I, you know, I remember telling, I said the story many a times, but you know, I had friends here. I was trying to tell them to get in before all this COVID stuff happened. Uh, like, it was like, guys, like this is not gonna be like this forever. Yeah. The prices here are absolutely insanely cheap. It's yeah. amazing. Buy something. Yeah. And then those anything. Same, anything, please. And then this whole tsunami came. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, just kidding. Not really. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, and now they are literally stuck. They literally, they've, they told me verbally have surrendered and they just aren't, they've given up on the idea of trying to own a home again yeah. at this point. And I was yeah. like, dang, that sucks. I feel for them. Yeah. Um, cause there's like, I get it. It's not for everybody. Um, there's people that just prefer to rent and sweet, more power to you. You're Absolutely. one of those. Absolutely. I get it. Home ownership is because here's the thing. Home ownership in and of itself is not an investment. Investment property is an investment. If you're not bringing in any income, it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's a long-term investment in that you could refinance it, but you still have debt with no income coming in, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But if you just want to live somewhere, your mortgage payment is just an expense the same way. Yeah. So I don't think there should be guilt in renting. Mm-hmm. You know, find some solace in the fact that at the end of the day, it is housing. But... I understand wanting to have something that you won't. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's it's definitely, yours. There's definitely, and I get that. Yeah, exactly. There's something to, to feel and, you know, something that's your of own. pride or there, accomplishment or just that freedom. Exactly. I get it. Mm-hmm. And there's like, and I, and like, think about when the subscription model uh, of phase of things happened. There was so much pushback on, like, oh, I have to like pay Apple Music 13 bucks a month just to like have access to music. Why can't I just own it and buy it? Right, like I, I remember that. Do you remember that back. shift of like, you would remember this as a designer when uh, the Adobe suite of products went from oh. buying the product and just having it to now needing Adobe subscription. <laughs> Dude, don't trigger me. And things like QuickBooks, where mm-hmm. you could buy QuickBooks as a desktop application, and you had it. And if it got outdated, you had to buy the new one. Mm-hmm. And they were sold in like the little DVD covers at like Shoppers Drug Mart and stuff, like. Yeah. Now it's like they've got you tricked where it's like, oh, you would have spent $300, but we're only going to charge you 20 bucks a month forever. <laughs> you always be updated all the time. Yeah. Which I get it. You know, um, I mean, it got, to do, it was getting to the point too, where it's like, I can understand the subscription model in that regard. I don't even know the subscriptions that I have. Oh yeah. I, I hate that. I'm it's like, terrifying. I'll see like an Apple line come off on a random credit card and I'm like, seems fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's this every month Amazon Prime charges my business Amex twice for Prime and I've yet to call because it's six bucks. And I'm just like, I, I don't want to deal with Amazon. I don't want to deal with Amazon customer service. For, and I'm like, it's obviously paying for something I use. Mm-hmm. I just can't. It's so hard. They make it so hard to figure out. Dude. Okay. So put my UX hat on. This does take me off. They I've, make it so hard. I have a similar situation happening right now with Microsoft. They are charging my business amex seven dollars and 49 cents a month i thought i've canceled that multiple times it took me forever to dig deep to find the subscription to cancel it yeah i've gone in 
and it's canceled. And it's still charging my card. And I'm still trying to figure out where the heck they're getting this money from. I was like, I swear, I've, I have I had like two different Microsoft accounts. And I swear. And both are clearing. Both are clearing. Like, I've made sure they're both canceled. And somehow it's still coming out of my account. I was like, as a UX designer, this is what we call dark patterns. It's bad. I literally was like, and they make getting on the phone with them as inconvenient as possible. Absolutely. So I don't call. Mm-hmm. And I can't find it in the app. It's so frustrating. It's all obviously by design to keep money. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hate it. So frustrating. This is my message to all of you. To just check your credit card bills. <laughs> check your credit card bills and fight the power. I agree. We'll be doing that this week. I agree. And you know what? Back to this just to, guess, to end this off. Buy anything mm-hmm. right now that you can get your hands on. If you can afford a home that's in like... <laughs> nowhere like nowhere liverpool nowhere out in the like sticks Mm -hmm. but there's the ability that you could even rent it or live there for a year even you can do the five percent down if you're going to live there and at least you've got yourself in a home that will hopefully appreciate and i understand there's fear about it crashing it's a risk yeah you know it's a risk anytime anyone buys a home it's the biggest purchase of most people's lives that's terrifying. There's, and so there's someone who commented on TikTok today about that was like they're they're, they're scared to be a homeowner only because of you know the things that you have to fix, things that can't you know come up. And I'll be honest, yeah, there's things that can come up that are, uh, can be a big big bill. Um, but there's it's actually not as much as I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, you're, I mean your hot water heater and your furnace and your elect whole electrical they're not going to fail every year. Yeah owning a property those things are going to break mm-hmm. it's the it's going to happen but if every year you have to spend three to five grand on maintenance slash improvements that's equity yeah and you, generally if you put five in you're going to get more than five out in equity mm-hmm. generally yeah so you are investing at least in the growth of your property so don't let that intimidate you too much because it's worth it mm-hmm yeah. And as Dalton was saying, like, you know, even if you get the smallest thing possible, like, you know, if you were to get a $40,000 piece of land in um, Tatamagoosh, Nova Scotia. Yeah. Beautiful town that's on the ocean. There's there's land out there going for about 40000 You just need to put 35% down. 50. No. On land? Mm-hmm. How? Um, I'm literally talking to brokers right now who I think it's because I have commercial mortgages. That's probably oh, that's definitely it. Yeah, I have to put fifty on land. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You, usually fifty is a rule. Um, but yeah, for um, my case, personal one. Ah. Um, they've um, I only have to put thirty five down. Oh, which is nice. Nice. So thirty five percent down of you know forty thousand is like what thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, someone can muster that up. Like, at least you're in. Yeah. You know, which I know is still not no small sum of money, but, you know, as you continue to figure out ways to, to bring money together, like, you can make it happen. Yeah. So, I believe that you will win, and I believe we will win. So, we'll do this together. We're all going to make it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, don't beat yourself up mm-hmm. if you think you missed an opportunity or, you know, you think you did the wrong thing because it's done. Yeah. You and, know. That, and that will discourage you from seeing other opportunities. Yes, you can't get hung up. If one passes you by, there will be another. It might be a year. It might be three years. It might be tomorrow. But there are real estate deals all the time. And you know what? Maybe get a little creative. And maybe this is a tip. You can pay monthly to access something called Nova Scotia Property Online. I think it's 100 bucks a month. It's a little expensive. But just get it for a month. You can look up any property in Nova Scotia and you can see who owns it. Oh. You can see who owns it, the owners, like the history of ownership. You can see everything about any like um, PID related stuff, subdivisions, um, amend. Like it's, it's, there's some good stuff there. Don't be afraid to find a distressed property, look up who owns it, and give them a shout. Yeah. Be bold. The word, right now, you got to fight for yourself. Mm-hmm. Who cares if they get upset and cuss you over the phone or hang up? Or you, you don't know that person from Adam, but you tried. 
And I get that me saying that is a lot different than being having the gumption to do it. It's intimidating for me to have those types of phone calls. And I do it all the time, but it's still intimidating. So I get it. But gee, what if you win that way? You'd mm -hmm. feel so good. Yeah, it'd be so worth it. Be so worth it. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you have the funds to get one month of Nova Scotia property online, just Google it. Get yourself on there. See what you can learn. Figure out who owns what and where. You know, and see if you can get a hold of these people, you know. Yeah. But what's the worst that can happen? Map it out. Put a Rolodex together, right? Um, of, like, people. And, like, just, you know, like, yeah, like spend that 30 days and make sure you get your, you squeeze your $100 worth out yeah, of that build, subscription. Yeah, get a list of properties and their contact information, and then you have to pay for it again. Mm -hmm. And just see where that gets you. Exactly. It's, it's funny, especially, I still believe in this, in this pro province specifically. Um there are still some out there uh, who still believe in the handshake, um, who are just old school, old fashioned. Oh, yeah. And I've ha I've actually had numerous friends that secured houses way below market value just because the person they reached out to liked them. Absolutely. And you know what? If you're I in a position where you've got some cash, that's very enticing. Mm-hmm to a, a person who maybe is on the edge of wanting to sell you their home. Yeah. Give them a huge down payment, you know, or like just make it super sweet for them. Like, mm -hmm. you know, give them if, value. You can, if you're not doing it as part of a business and you don't need, maybe everything's so cut and dry. I'm not saying go break any rules, but a cash transaction is not illegal, mm -hmm. but people like them for a certain reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about what they do with it once it's their money. Yeah. You don't have to live with the fact that what they, you don't, that doesn't matter. But if it gets you the home, who cares? This doggy dog, man. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You got to get it. Yeah. So if you've got a little bit of cash and, you know, there are properties, you know, Digby, Yarmouth, um, Liverpool, um, maybe like Trenton, mm -hmm. um, you know, those towns in between New Glasgow and Ganesh, New Glasgow, Toronto, those little t highway towns that are just kind of small. Yeah. There are single family homes currently selling for like 175, 200 grand. Mm -hmm. Duplexes for, you know, 275, 300. 300. Mm -hmm. Get in. It's yeah. a duplex. Yeah. You can rent one side. And, you know, and but you also have to be willing to live there. I get it. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, you have to be willing to live there. But in some, like, you only have to be willing to live there for a year. A year. And you qualify for 5% down. Exactly. And think about where our country is going. Canada is one of the largest countries in the world with such a limited population. People are moving into these towns more and more. These things are getting more and more populated. 15. That's that's 15 grand. That's 5% on 300 grand. Closing costs, legal fees, survey if you need it. Say there's an extra 5 grand. I've never had closing costs be more than 5 grand. Mm -hmm. I don't think. All right. Yeah, so me either. Say you need twenty grand to get into a three hundred thousand dollar home that generates revenue. It's you just got to sacrifice a year, mm -hmm. and I know that doesn't work for everyone. But if it works for you, don't wait because mm -hmm. I promise you, someone like myself or other real estate investors are going to look at that and go, "That's a good deal," yeah. you know. Exactly. But that's what it is. I'll end it by saying this. You got this. Yeah, and, you can do it. and we are here for support in the best way we can at uh, this tough time in our country's history. Um, like this is probably like, like I've, I wouldn't have envisioned anything like this um, coming, um, but we're here. Yeah. And um, we have to figure out how to navigate uh, such incredibly expensive uh, housing prices mm -hmm. and how to handle dealing with corporations coming in and buying things up. Yeah. It's happening. It's here. Um, we can complain about it, uh, which we tend to do. Um, yeah. But we can also figure a way to deal with it and how to work against it. And we have connections um, who aren't happy with what a lot of things that are coming down, um, but they're using their connections and their resources to fight against it. And if we pull together and do what we can together. Um, it's amazing what we can do and accomplish. Absolutely. It is like the best form of civil disobedience is to just win. Mm hmm <laughs> when you're supposed to lose. It's true. And it will just shock the world when 
behind the scenes, the government scrambling because we did it mm-hmm. as a population of people who wanted to be homeowners. Did it? That is the best way to win. Yeah. Um, and join our Discord because mm-hmm. there's literally a real estate chat in there where, you know, if this wasn't enough or you have specific questions, we can give you those or at least lead you somewhere to maybe where you could get the best answer. Yeah. Because I'm not an all, I'm not a 100% expert on anything. Mm-hmm. I just try my best. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And that, and that Discord is obviously like, you know, we're growing. Like, we're, we have so many projects on the go. We, we're doing our best. Like, it's kind of been falling a little bit um, in terms of what we want to give to at this point. Um, but cause I, I like to be more proactive and just keep giving information in it. Just haven't been able to do that as of the past couple of weeks, but anytime anyone's got a question, we will answer as soon as we possibly can. Absolutely. Every time you literally that, that discord channel, you literally have our ear. We will hundred percent be on it and answer it yep. right away. So, and you can DM on there too, if you're not comfortable in like yeah. a public forum yeah. for some reason, no, no hate. Mm-hmm. Exactly. DM. And those or who are on our socials, yeah, DM, yeah, exactly, and as well, um, elevatepodcast.ca, yeah, shout out them and shout out our email. We're here for it. And to those who are currently in Discord, we're thankful for you, and we're we're enjoying our little unit that we've got together I there. Know. It's fun times. We have some good times there. So perfect. Moving on, we are moving on to the non-resident deed transfer tax again with the same idea. Yeah. This is interesting. This one makes me excited. Yeah. like This one gets you excited, eh? Yeah. So the province of Nova Scotia has introduced a uh, provincial deed transfer tax and a property tax um, to non-residents of Nova Scotia in the 2022-23 budget. Yeah. Um, so what they're saying is the provincial deed transfer tax is effective for all purchase and sale agreements. It applies to all residential properties or portion of property deemed residential with three dwelling units or less, including vacant land classified as residential. The PDDT is a 5% tax levied on the purchase price or the assessed value of the property. This is where it gets kind of juicy. We kind of scroll down to where it, uh, here it is. So this where it gets juicy is the way they could ta- ta- um, calculate this pr- a new property tax against non-resident home buyers. Yeah. Is the pro, uh, the provincial property tax for non-residents is an annual tax of two dollars per hundred dollars of the property's assessed value. So if it's assessed at a hundred thousand dollars, you are getting taxed two grand. Does that work? So you're saying, what was the que- on a hundred? So grand? per hundred grand? No, so yeah, hundred dollars. So on a hundred thousand dollar home. Hundred dollars. So yeah, hundred thousand divided by hundred times two times two. Two grand. It's two grand. Yeah. Yeah. So. Non-resident home buyers are now being charged two grand a year for if they hold residential property here in the province and they're not they don't live here. Yep. And on top of that, if they go to buy it, they're being taxed with an extra five percent on the land transfer um, because they don't live here. Extra five percent, or instead of three percent, it's now five percent. Uh, well, instead of the one and a half percent, it's five percent. I thought it was three percent. Maybe for commercial. Right. I can see that. Got it. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, because it's definitely one, one and a half percent. Okay, got it. That's good then. No, no. Yeah. So that it's not the one and a half plus five. No. It just is five. Yeah, it's just five. Still. Yeah. It's that's a lot. It's an actual I'm more cash. excited about this one, the non resident property tax. It's already having an effect. Um I've been hearing and I word on the street is keep an eye on communities in kind of beach towns. Um because near vacation the end, of, homes. vacation homes will be going on the market. And I'm hearing this already. I've already been in touch with about three or four different owners who are looking to sell at the end of the summer because they can't afford to keep their properties here. Yeah. Uh, because some people who've been paying $2,000 a year in taxes are now, it's going to be jumping to eleven, twelve thousand $12,000 a year in taxes for them. And they can't afford to hold it. Yeah. So... I think this is going to have an immediate impact. Um, I shouldn't say immediate, but I think probably six, eight months, you'll start seeing some things start coming on the market, yeah. and flooding, which will be very interesting to see how that goes. Yeah. The only issue is, this goes back to, I don't know how much is going to really affect, say. Um, yeah, this won't make buying a home in downtown Halifax any easier. No, but like to those that are have been starting to creep up, it'll at least kind of suppress it a little bit for now. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's an interesting move. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, I think this will create that lull mm-hmm. yeah of we're just looking. taming it for like i like you said six eight maybe a year yeah oh you know as people try to figure out how they're going to handle and go around you know the new rules yeah um and adjust so yeah that's for me uh it's a little bit more uh at least for the regular person i'm excited for them mm-hmm. um i think that like 
I initially was kind of like, yeah, we'll see where it goes. I initially didn't, I didn't read about the property tax increase. I just thought it was an extra 5%. I'm like, okay, well, great. Government's pocketing more money. Congrats. Right. <laughs> um, but the ta- property tax, that's an ongoing fee. That's that hurts. Yeah. Um, that does hurt. So yeah, that will deter you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, now I'm, I'm going to do some calculations for myself. Cause I'm curious because there's people that have properties that are worth like say 500 G's to buy that by a hundred times two. Like, yeah, that's 10 grand every year for a $500,000 property. That's crazy. And, and that's, that's, that's crazy. That's cool. We'll see what happens here in Nova Scotia. Keep your eyes peeled. As I said, keep your eyes peeled on the vacation towns, um, beach towns at the end of the summer. You'll also start seeing things though, open up. It says some properties are exempt include residential property with more than three dwelling units. Yep. Oh, yeah. three or less. Let's read that. Let's properly read out the exemptions here. Because this. that that might mean some homes to be like duplexes might become oh, available. True. It's a good call. Yeah. So let's clear. Let's you read that out. Dalton. Yeah. So this is an exemption to the non-resident property tax, not the D transfer tax. Yep. Uh, some properties are exempt from the provincial property tax for non-residents. Exemptions include residential property with more than three dwelling units, residential property with three or less dwelling units where 50% or more of the ownership is by residents of Nova Scotia. So a duplex that is owned at least half by uh, a Nova Scotian. Mm-hmm. Uh, residential property with three or less dwelling units where over 50% of the ownership is by non-residents of Nova Scotia and rented out on a full-time basis, at least for at least 12 months. So meaning a duplex that is owned by non-residents, but is on a full, so that means Airbnbs are now going to get a little screwed up. Because mm-hmm. if you're on a tenancy lease, that's, that right. that doesn't affect them. Property classified as commercial, obviously, yeah, like, you know, if you own, like, a corner store, mm-hmm. that's different. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. So, it'll, again, we won't see something like today, um, but I'm nearing This will of, trickle down. Yeah. August, September, I think we'll start seeing some interesting uh, results from this. Yeah, because anyone who now who owns an Airbnb is going to, we're coming up on May. Mm-hmm. They're going to see out the rental, se- like, the yeah. vacation rental season. They're definitely going to see that out. Yeah. Exactly. Like that's kind of what I've been hearing, at least from those who own that I've heard is that there's like, yeah, we're just going to try and enjoy the summer months that are in our vacation property and then we're yeah. selling. So yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yep. Um, so which will also, it'll, it'll, it's going to soften the market. Uh, is that it's not going to crash the market, but it'll soften the market. Um, you're not going to see it, a drop much in pricing, but you'll see a, and at that point in time, you stag- cannot say, yeah, I'm waiting for it to crash. Cause yeah. Yeah, this is as good as it may get. Yeah. Take the opportunity. Please. Yep. Exactly. Please yeah. capitalize. Capitalize. Socially. So <laughs> <laughs> hey oh, we love it. Um, so yeah, shout out Nova Scotia. We'll see where it goes this summer. Yeah. Um, Hope for the best. Yeah, we're here for it. <laughs> I think it's also important to note that there is at least three large apartment complexes that are being built downtown right now. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. That's are true. they apartment or condo? Uh, I I'm just walking by the construction sites every day, right? And but there's one waterfront. Yep. There's one that's pretty much up the street from that. Yep. And another one down the street from Staples. Yes, right. another one. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that is a good thing. I think mm-hmm. you know it obviously will increase supply well, of either rental or condos. Well, I thought that was interesting when the um, the provincial government rammed through everything and through council, city council. That is not good. You don't like that, eh? I, I mean, it's 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 good. F- it starts. A, it's a scary precedent. Don't get me wrong, because they aren't on the ground here every day. Yeah, to see what pushing something like that. But they technically mean. are. His province house literally is downtown Halifax, and they're pushing to get more housing in Halifax. So technically, yeah, I get where you're coming from. But do you think they're self aware? Um. I think they're they know they need to increase the housing supply. Absolutely right. And let's be honest, like if they didn't ram it through city council, I know my area is one of the places that's getting like upwards of eight hundred units within like one square kilometer. Yeah, the old, by the hotel. Yeah, and um, I know if city council had to try to get that through, 
you had people in my neighborhood like, we don't want high rises in our neighborhood. And this, like, that's what would have happened. I'm you would so, have all this delay. I'm so glad the government was able to kibosh the noise from the NIMBYs, 100%. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Um, but I just want to make sure, like, what some of the things that Halifax planning does do, well or not, it's something that the Nova Scotia Housing Task Force didn't, I'm assuming didn't do, because it was so quick. Yeah was look at like implications on traffic, implications on density. And like, you know, all these things. There's one grocery store downtown. Yeah. Where are these people gonna buy, you know what I'm saying? Right. When you go to Toronto, there's a Longos in almost every single condo building. Right. You know, mm-hmm. even if it's a small boutique grocer, you need these things now. You're gonna need to double the amount of banks, of stores, of um, mm-hmm. roadways, or are we gonna make the city, you know, much more bike slash pedestrian friendly. I think we're trying, yeah. but I think the buildings might be built first. Yeah. For example, the Cogswell Exchange is not slated to be done until 2026 or yeah. eight. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a long time away. It doesn't take that long to build an apartment building. Right. So I'm just nervous of the implications that may, we built the Popeyes and you couldn't get through the freaking highway. <laughs> you know, so I'm just nervous. Tell the Popeyes. No one knows what it means. <laughs> So I'm just nervous of what that may mean for our core. Right. No, I, I totally get it. In terms of the core, yes. Uh, I'm intrigued um, with the, uh, there's one location that I was intrigued by was the Portland, no, sorry, not the Portland, the Pleasant Street Corridor. Oh, yeah. They're putting literally like was it between 400, 600, eight, like somewhere between four and 800 units between literally Pleasant Street Diner and the hospital. Like literally, like. To be honest. That's crazy. That is like. Sick. I love it for that area. That area needs it. That area, uh, don't sell. Yeah, don't sell there, homies. Yeah, you got a property there. Do not because sell. Because once you bu- once you start building things like that in an area, it changes the game. All of a sudden, if there's people who, if there's that many people there, all of a sudden you need things that are cool and retro and keep people in your area and inspired and like a grocery store. The business, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, and the but but the 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 commercial. Yeah. Real estate around there will level up too. Yeah. There's already so many places that are already slated to go in uh, along there. It's going to, but as you said. I mean, I, I tried to buy, there was a piece of land and I tried so hard to buy it. It was a million dollars and it was a pl- plot of just barren grassland. Yeah. Right by the beverage room. Yep. And just like the bidding, like it just went. Really? It went astronomic. Then they took it off the market, I'm pretty sure. And then went through like a private broker, like CBRE or Collier's. Like they took, I, I don't know what happened, but I was not even close to getting to there. becoming the owner of that. That I thought was, there, it's, it's, it's about timing, which I think is intriguing, right? That place has been there since five, at least the five years, oh, like around five years after tracking it. Like it's and it was probably worth nothing then. No, worth nothing. It was just been like there's been plans on it for for ever, and uh, no one ever bought it until this pandemic hit, and there was all of a sudden real estate starts shooting up. Everyone's like, oh, I need that Literally, now. <laughs> look at this. I'm going to show you. This blew my mind. It's in the north end Halifax. It's in the Hydrostone area. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's near like. Um, what street would that be like near Sebastian street right. near Agricola, like in that area of the North end. So right around where I grew up and this just does not make sense to me. Like, oh, this is crazy. Um, it's kind of hard to use this map when you're stressed out and in a rush. Gee, Agricola. I think we okay. should fire Dalton next now. True. <laughs> okay. Get ready for this. I'm ready. This is the property that's currently on the land. Okay. Okay. Just a single family home. And it is for sale with drawings to build a building that looks like this on it. Oh. Because it has been. Show the camera. It has been approved through grandfathering. Um, how do you say? Um, to zone it C2, mm-hmm. which the center plan wouldn't allow for. Yeah. So because it's grandfathered in, that's valuable. So to buy that little single family home with plans is a million dollars. Could you imagine being the owner of that single family home? And they just went and probably spent a hundred grand yeah. on getting plans done, but it does come with civil engineering. Like right. it, it, it gets the full, 
you you just have to pay a construction company to come do it. Yeah, but you, they but you, a you million probably, bucks. That's crazy. Like I, I think what the owner of that place probably bought that thing for like a hundred grand back in the day. Back whenever. Yeah, and now it's <laughs> the mill. And then there's one on Good Cold Harbor Road. Shout out them. I think that's the name of the street, right? No, it's Portland yeah. Street. Here it is. <clears throat> it's a twenty unit building on Cold Harbor Road. Oh yes, I've seen this place. Yeah, yeah. Great. 20 units, that's a, like, that is a... That's a huge that, deal. At that point, when you buy a building like that, you are running a full real estate operation. That is like... You've gone Grant Cardone. That's a, right, that is a... <laughs> that is a building that requires, like, staff. Like, mm. you know what I mean? You need a resident manager. That's a lot of people. So it's just, that's not for your everyday investor. But it's $5 million. Wow. For 20 units. So that is what... 250 grand a door. That's actually for Cole Harbor. Dog, I like 80, 90, 100 grand a door. I love me some, <laughs> I love me some Sidney Crosby, but that's that too much, man. That is crazy per door. That is insane. And they're saying um, guided viewings will begin April 8th. Offers due April 18th. Um, and this is probably one of those ones like um, I heard of a listing that went live this week. And it says in the, the cut sheet. Offers to be due no earlier than April something. Preemptive offers will not even be considered. Wow. Who are you? I'm the boss. That's what they're Who saying. Who are you? What? What? A, that is like. So but, I wonder, are they nervous? Like, are they trying to make it seem like they still are in this type of market? Like, I wonder why they felt that. Like, I haven't seen them outright say, we won't even look at it. Right. Yeah, I so I get buyer fatigue, mm-hmm. understandable. Yeah, because that's annoying. Seriously, like, bro, like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I get it. It's a, I think that's the last point I wanted to hit before we moved on. Yeah. was the point that you talk about in terms of infrastructure, right? Because mm-hmm. you say you, you say put those eight hundred units on Pleasant Street. Um, you put there's another bunch of units going up on Portland Street. Yep, like those streets cannot handle. Like that's can, that's already a main artery from Eastern Pass. If I want to turn downtown. left on either one of those streets, I need like a shot. Yeah. Like to even consider wanting to do it. Right. It's like a pain. Yeah. And now you're going to add at minimum 800 more people. Yeah. Minimum. Because not everyone's going to live alone. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Well, see, so oh. yeah, it'll be very interesting. Either way, I'm happy that the housing's increasing. It'll be interesting where the infrastructure goes with it. Me too. Um, and with, Let's see if it's affordable. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. It's probably going to be pretty, pretty high price condo units, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. Which will... Uh, here we go with the gentrification. Here we go. Gentrification. You're gonna get eaten alive for that word, Bob. I know. Bring it. <laughs> hey, it's it's a re- it's a reality, dog. People don't talking about gentrification. No, I was kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to uh, blind bidding in Canada. Is that coming to an end? Uh, yeah, Korea, right? Yeah, it was Korea that put this out. Yes, uh, the Canadian Real Estate Association is proud to announce a pilot project again. Pilot project, so they're just testing out, see how this goes. Uh, that will display real-time tracking of offers on Realtor.ca listings, a first for Canada. Open offers, a groundbreaking offer management software. It starts with, you know, that's actually what they're called, open offers. Yeah, two uh, ends. Uh, they're so cool. Uh, a groundbreaking <laughs> offer management software provided by a property technology company, open negotiation. Wow, they're... they're- <laughs> They're unique. Yeah, I love them. It sounds like someone that we used to have an old boss that was like that. Um, has been selected to be integrated with Realtor.ca, Canada's number one real estate platform. Um, MLS for anyone from America. Yeah, exactly. So uh, about time. Are you for this? So I'll speak. Okay, so I won't. There's, a, there's a lot of people who've, who've like, there's a lot of shows who've covered this already. We're going to talk up in terms of our, uh, we're going to put our two cents on this one, right? Is from a UX perspective, love it. Mm-hmm. I'm putting my design hat on. I think it's fantastic. I, I just, I just want to see if it's worth my time to put an offer in. Absolutely. Love it. Mm-hmm. But I'll shift it to you of what you think of it. I'm for it. Okay. I'm absolutely for it for two reasons. Because I am also a buyer in this market. Mm-hmm. And I think it's... Nice to know. I think I want to know where I stand. Time is money. Yeah. And whether or not you're an investor like myself, who maybe is offering all the time on properties, Mm -hmm. or you're just trying to find a home, no matter what, your time is just as valuable. So you need to protect that. And I think this does that. Yeah. From a seller standpoint, 
what I I buy things or real estate always with an exit plan. There's always an exit strategy in everything that I do. So if I didn't do the right due diligence, my property then might not sell for what it should because maybe I bought a bad deal. I just don't, I'd rather do things slowly and buy good deals. So that way when I go to sell it, I don't care if people see what people are bidding yeah. because it's worth what I'm asking. And I just sold a property recently and my realtor was on the exact same page as me, which is we're going to list at the fair market value. We're not going to list below to try and create a bidding war and we're not going to list too high. We're going to list at what it's worth. And then what happens is obviously out of our control. Right. And it did not go like wildfire. It went over asking, but mm -hmm. not by an absurd amount mm -hmm. because it was priced fairly. And I will always, I will play this game fair forever. Mm. And that's the way I want to do it. And I think this creates fairness. Right. Yeah. Fairness to a degree. Um, I think, uh, yeah, it, it establishes fairness, which yep. I agree. Um, but it will, I don't think it's going to help our situation. No, no, I'm definitely. And what, and the reason why I say that is because I will actually shift to this next article by the Canada Real Estate Association. Um, it says banning blind bidding does not address a lack of housing supply. Yeah, I saw this as well. It was great. Um, and so I'll kind of jump down to this article, uh, this paragraph right here. It says open bidding is still bidding. For example, in Australia, where they have implemented open bidding, houses, housing prices are still high and continue to rise. Home ownership remains out of reach for millions of Canadians because there's not enough housing supply to meet demand. So again, this is not going to solve any issues. It's a step in the right direction in terms of creating fairness in the buying market. Yep. Um, but anyone who watches Lux Listings on Amazon Prime, um, which is the Australian version of oh, Selling Sunset, Sunset. Um, love the show because they actually focus more on the buying um, of houses. But uh, like they 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 showed what some of these open bidding is looking like, and it's wild. It, it, it actually it's like it, it's freaking you know it's eBay. Yep. You know auctions running out. Yeah. Exactly. Should I go higher? But at exactly. least you know. Exactly. That's the difference now. Because, and maybe that means I become um, wealthier slowly, mm -hmm. but I would rather play the game fair. And maybe that's just my moral thing. And maybe, I've said this before, there's things that I think I do that people who are worth millions of dollars might think are stupid, but it makes me happy. And so I'm fine with it. But this helps the regular person too. Yeah. Because I could not imagine the stress, the anxiety, the self doubt when every single offer you submit is rejected without a reason, without knowing what it went for, et cetera. Mm -hmm. At least here it's all out on the table. Exactly. Your cards are all out there. If you see someone submitted a cash offer, uh, you know, 50 grand over asking, go move on. Mm -hmm. They're not going to take your financing offer with, you know, buyer's conditions that last four weeks with a closing three months. They're not. Yeah. They're just not. And you lost that one. Yeah. But at least you knew before you wasted your time. Exactly. Except for the, there's one situation that happened. Again, this is actually one of the scenarios I was telling you about that person just took below market value for their house. Um, Which is such a an iconic a, thing to do. It's, low key. It was a crazy story. So <laughs> it was a friend of mine who was in that situation like many of us are or many are people out there are um, where they're just like, I'm not going to be able to afford a house in this market. And this house went up for sale. And, um, and my friend, he's like, uh, he... He put it in like probably fifteen twenty over asking. It was a house was like around like I think two fifty. So he mm -hmm. put like two seven like two sixty five whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, and he got it, got the house, and he it was great. And then he found out later that uh, he wasn't the highest bid. Oh. There was someone who outbidded him by like seventy five thousand, <gasps> and the woman didn't take it. What an icon. And uh, apparently because that woman also still happens to live on that street and just was like, I have a, I have a good vibe about you and just took it. Weird, right? What an icon. Right? And so the, because of the craziest part of the story, though, is later my friend had someone move across the street from him. And uh, that person started, you know, asking questions. It's like, hey, where are you from? It was not the other person. <gasps> It was the other person Drama. who got, and there's like, yeah, we're just like, I was just like, what do you do for a living? Like, what do you do? And he's just like, oh, I like, I work, you know, you know, uh, for the government. And this other, she's like, well, I work for the government too. And he was like, oh, okay. And then ends up finding out later in that conversation that she was the other bid. And he was, she's like, I just don't really know why they didn't take my money. Like I, I offered more than what you paid for it. 
That's iconic. And this is, goes back to our point. Just call people if you can, and you, you'll be amazed at what could happen. Throughout the pandemic, I purchased two properties, the duplex and the six-unit building, mm-hmm. both of which I paid under asking for. Wow. It can happen. Yep, it's possible in this market. Yeah, it can happen. But it, they it's also like, weren't right in Halifax. Yeah. You know? And it takes some extra... And the problem is, too, is like it takes some extra work. It's not going to be done tr- in the traditional sense anymore, right? Yeah, but it needs some finesse. It yeah, it needs some, some creativity, some finesse, and that's what we're offering. Um, and you're not going to get a diamond. Yeah. You're not going to get a gem. There's no... You might find a diamond in the rough, mm-hmm. but you're not going to get the diamond. Yeah. But you can turn something into something that's worth a whole lot more. Exactly. And we believe that we can still win. So we will make it happen. And I'll be really curious to see where this, um, you know, actually being on like seed bids is going to go. It'll be really, I'm really interested to see what happens. Uh, I think it's huge. I think being able to see that digitally is crucial. Yep. Um, it just makes sense. Like, the fact it took this long. Yeah, how do you not know? Like, like it's so crazy. I'm like, oh, well. It's, we're it's spending hundreds for... of thousands of dollars and we don't know what's going on with everyone else's. Isn't that crazy? Like, as that's if bonkers. it's jump change. As Seriously. if it's relatively available. I can see what a hat is going to go for online, but I can't see what a, a house, house is like prepping to go for. Unreal. So stupid. Yeah, it is. It's literally dumb, so I can Canada catching up, finally. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. So we'll see where it goes. We'll be happy to see uh, what happens there and... And uh, we move on to a wild card segment. So this is what I thought was interesting. So I started watching a show on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Called The Dropout. Okay. Yeah. And so it's about this woman called Elizabeth Holmes, CEO of Th- Theranos. Oh, she, <gasps> she. What? She was the main character she in was. her own play. She really was. Dude. That was crazy. What a crazy story that was, right? All right, break it down and for to our this, listeners what we're talking about. To this day, she still won't, like, really lead on to, like... What was actually going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. I just knew of her through... I fell down a Wikipedia hole one night. Mm-hmm. I knew about her before this came out. Yeah. But basically, she had created this company and a product that I believe was for blood transfusion or blood collection. Yeah, blood collection. Blood collection. Mm-hmm. That was revolutionary it was the best it was the fastest it was the least painful it allowed for everything you could want out of blood collection that you don't have right now Mm -hmm. because it was all a god like it was all fugazi (laughs) you know so um but she i mean had how many investors it was a publicly traded company wasn't it i don't know about publicly traded i could be wrong about that but but, there were certainly they had a lot of investors external investors at least walgreens like big names, yeah. They had convinced, like the biggest players in the games, billion dollar corporations in pharmaceutical and sciences, that this was real. Yeah, and she lived the high life, but she ran the company as a CEO. She did every. She was the CEO. Yeah, and it was all a fugazi, which is nuts. I was like, as I've been watching the show, um, there's a pair, there's a couple, yeah, you know, documentaries on her as well, um, because it's it's just genuinely interesting. About how how one person really she I think she, I mean I think part of it is she she genuinely believed her own hype. Yes, that's the imagine only way the legitimate company she could run. Right, she'd be unstoppable for real. Like she was, I mean, I'm glad she's a gangster. Uh, totally, she did like a lot of unethical things. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, but like she was gonna win. Yeah, she was. Uh, <laughs> that was the line from the movie uh, uh, GTFM. Get the freaking money. Let's go. She was about it. She and really she was. was rich. Mm-hmm. Like, in every sense of the word. Yeah. She had the lifestyle, too. Yeah, she definitely did. And uh, it was, she. I mean, obviously, her the big thing with her was her her idol was Steve Jobs. Yes. That's why she always wore the black turtleneck. Yep. And uh, wanted to create a product that was so revolutionary. Yeah. World didn't see coming. And literally, like, Walgreens literally set up. Um, and like what they called a wellness center in all their stores. They had put money into it so they could do this blood collection in this thing. And they had technology. It just didn't work. Yeah. And like <laughs> they're using other people's IPs to cover it up. Like it was crazy. If you haven't like watched the three, can you watch the three part documentary? You can do that. She has 60 minutes uh, on interviews, but it's also on Disney plus. If you want to watch like the whole eight, nine episodes, it is. Yeah. But it's crazy. Uh, like not. Yeah, jeez, I love it, love it, and uh, kind of finishing off our time here, uh, crypto. 
Hasbula. Um, so anyone who follows Barstool, Caleb Presley was able, uh, who is a member of the Barstool team. Love him. I actually do enjoy him a lot as a, a character. Mm-hmm. Uh, he interviewed Hasbula and, um, and he ended up doing like this little like kind of giveaway deal with Hasbula. So if we go to, um, uh, what was the timestamps I gave here? Ten, if you go to the 10 minute mark, or well, watch like 50 seconds of this. So he, Caleb's giving his like, Rundown of his uh, time with Hezbollah okay. and what he's going to be giving away through him. Okay. He's, he's selling that switch. He's selling it for less than market price. He's, he's winning on his Instagram. So I told him when I give him all the stuff, I know it's not going to fit you, but you can feel free to sell it. But he gifted me back this tennis shoe, which is a, uh, it's a combination of me and Hezbollah, if you can see it. <laughs> Uh, d- done by a custom artist on Air Force One, and then he signed it right here. So we're going to auction this off, and all the pro. And this is a d- Hasbula decision uh, approved by Hasbula. We're going to auction this shoe off, and all of the proceeds are going to go to the Barstool Fund for a small business. I love that. Who is an artist who created a half Caleb, half Hasbula? So he has an NFT collection called Crypto Hasbula, which all the NFTs are just people who are famous who, but then blended into his body. <laughs> it's not good. That's, that's, that's amazing. Is that nuts? What? <laughs> that's so iconic. Could you like it's a whole NFT collection of just famous people that look like me? <laughs> I love Hasbula. Dude, he's so funny. He is hilarious. And I was talking to Caleb, like, well, not I was talking. I was watching an interview with Caleb, and they were like, like what was it like kind of being there in Abu Dhabi yeah. with them, this, that, the other? And he's just like, like, Caleb's the guy who's like, he's interviewed so many celebrities. Mm-hmm. And he said this dead serious. He's like, he's the most famous person I've ever interviewed. He's like, the it's crazy. Anytime he went out in public, it was like a rock star is coming to town. Like, everyone's flocking to him. Wow. Which is crazy. I love that for him. Yeah. Like, it's it just like the internet really is like just levels the playing field, doesn't it? Yep. And I uh, love to see it. But That's yeah. crazy. If you want to see what an NFT collection looks like with Hasbulas, just buy the millions. Wow. And there it is. That's yeah. cool. I like the, the sneaker too. Yeah. That's cool kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Shout out Hasbulas. So that's it for our show today. Uh, to those who are in our Discord group, we'll see you over there. Um, but whatever it is you're doing, whether you be trying to buy a house or trying to buy a Hasbulla NFT, oh, or find somewhere to rent downtown. True. Oh, that's a good one. True. Whatever it is you're doing, wherever you are, we love you. We're out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>